Hello, it's Constance and I'm here for a quick book review. Now this is the first time that I've done a book review on my channel and I thought it was about time that I did it for my favorite knitting book which is To The Roses. Now when I do a book review I like to um, do a review once I've worked with the book or at least created a garment from the book and this is a knitting pattern book before I do um, a full review because um, there's a difference between doing a book review versus doing a flip through. And so today, as I think I've already stated, I'll be reviewing um, To the Roses by Alice Star Moore. Now that is the paperback version that I just share, share with you. Um, but let me get into um, just some of the details. Now this book uh, was actually first created, there's um, a first edition version in 1998, and I actually do own that copy. However, I will not be reviewing that copy because it is no longer in publication, and I think that, I don't know if those yarns are still being used, but I did purchase a copy of it simply because I'm just a huge fan of Alice Star Moore's um, works and designs, and I just wanted to have it in my library. But this is the original. And I was able to find this collection, um, this book, version of the book, um, from a private seller. And so that was the 1998 version. Then they um, released a new version. I think it was 2013, but let me make sure. Yes, this newer version was released in 2013. Now, I own the paperback version, and I also own the hardback version. And again, this is because I'm such a huge fan, but also I think the book is so visually appealing and stunning that I needed to have a hard, hardback version, more of a car, coffee table book or display version. And this is that version, the hardback version. I don't actually work from the hardback version I um, because I think it's so stunning. But I know that when I create knitting patterns, I tend to um, write or make my little notes and notations on the pattern a bit and I like to also sometimes I photocopy um, the charts and so you know with photocopying that's putting a lot of use and wear on the book which is what I why I consider the paperback version my workhorse version and um, so I write a lot in this version and I, I also use it to make copies and things like that when I need to, charts to you know be um, blown up or something like that and so um, I'll get into, I'll do a flip through, I've already done it and I'll insert that here, but I'll just um, quickly talk a bit about the books. So um, I'll say that I first learned of these books um, actually through the Fruity Knitting podcast. Andrea talked about it in one of her earlier episodes and she was wearing one of the garments and I thought that it was the most beautiful knitted item um, I'd ever seen and I couldn't even imagine ever doing something like that but I uh, set a goal to do it one day and so I finally purchased the book and I purchased the kit and I created the garment that um, stood out to me the most that I was most attracted to which was the Jane Seymour and I covered this in previous podcasts so I won't go into details but I do have the garment here today it is my proudest make and um, it typically stays on the mannequin because I'm still just so proud of it but this is the Jane Seymour Now this garment is uh, featured, it's the featured garment on the cover of the hardback version which I just shared with you and um, I also created another garment, the Elizabeth of York. Now I'll say that the instructions are very detailed and they're very precise and it's really clear and I love that because when you're working up, I will say that um, not all of the patterns but a lot of the patterns do require advanced techniques, not that they're um, they're not hard to do, but you will need to learn um, some of the newer techniques. And so with the Jane Seymour, I know I had to learn some new skills and new techniques. And um, I found the Elizabeth of York to be a bit easier, but I think that was because I was slowly building up my skills. And um, with this book, um, I feel like I lost the train of thought. But yeah, you have those diverse range of skills because they have the easier garments but then they have the more complex garments and what I was saying was that it's good to have those detailed instructions because when you're working a, a type of complex garment like that you don't want any room for confusion and I love that it's really broken down to the T and so I love that because I like to like check off when I like uh, finish a section and then it kind of gives you a sense of accomplishment and so um, I even get excited like I plan to make the Anne Boleyn. That's another garment in the book. And I know that the um, 
instructions. I think it's about 13 pages of instructions uh, for that garment alone. But I love that because that means that they're going to go into deep detail. So it won't be any guesswork on my part. And so I'll be able to actually, I think, successfully execute the project because the details are um, so good. And um, I also further say that the photography in these books are amazing. That is why I feel there, felt there was a need to own a second copy because if even if you weren't a knitter, I think Andrea said this, you may just want to flip through the book and look at the garments along, especially if you are really into history. And I just um, love that because you see the research that went into each garment and the amount of um, thought that went into it. For example, with the Jane Seymour, if you look up an image of Jane Seymour, the actual patterns on the sleeve of the gown that she's wearing is actually mimicked in the actual knitted garment. And so taking that inspiration from a garment from that century and then transferring it over into our current environment, I think that's uh, pretty, pretty amazing. and. Um, I just love seeing the inspiration take form into um, that element. So um, again, I'll do the flip through and I'm trying to make sure that I don't miss uh, sharing with you uh, anything else on this book, but I will just simply end it with saying that it is an amazing book. If you like those unique designs, but still they're wearable pieces, I know that um, some knitters have felt that it may be difficult to style the garments but actually when I look at the garments I think about how I'm how I'm going to wear it with my wardrobe and I found them quite wearable um, when it's colder I'm constantly wearing the Jane Seymour and Elizabeth of York definitely almost every week because I love the garments that much and I find that they work well with the um, with your standard wardrobe and so um, I'm actually wearing the Elizabeth of York today simply uh, for this video, but it is summer in South Carolina, and so I'm in an air-conditioned apartment. But I, as you can see, I'm just wearing it with a new look 6469 dress, which is a simple mock turtleneck dress, and I think that it looks really nice with this. And so I like having, you have this striking piece, but it still works seamlessly into a wardrobe, and so that's another aspect of it. And so. When you look at the images, and they are amazing and appealing, also try to think past the gorgeous styling, on, but think about how you would wear it in your everyday life. And I think that you'll start to see an even deeper beauty to these garments as I do, and which is why I just love them so much. Um, so yes, it, that is concludes my um, review of the Tudor Roses. It is a favorite book of mine, and I will say it is a book by Alice Starmore but it does feature designs from Jade Starmore also within the collection and so you have these two talented artists bringing their work together in these books and I think that is why it's such a huge favorite with me and that is why I have a goal a lifetime goal to create every garment from this book um, one day and so hopefully I'll be able to share with you how each of those garments are coming along oh I'll quickly say I do have one on the needles now. I completed, as I stated, the Jane Seymour and the Elizabeth of York, and I'm currently working on the Mary Queen of Scots. And as you can see, um, I changed up the colorway a bit. Once I do a flip through, you'll see that the garment is actually a green and blue um, colorway, but I decided to go for a more autumn inspired colorway. And actually, I'm starting to realize that I typically change up the colorway just a bit with each of the garments but even if you stay with the exact colors of the garments then you'll still get such an amazing result all right you guys i think i may i cover everything i hope i cover everything but if you have any questions for me let me know down below and i'll try to answer them as best i can thank you for taking a moment out of your day to hear all about tudor roses bye Hi you guys, so I'm coming in for um, a quick flip through of the book. It won't be as detailed um, as like going through the book as if you owned it, but hopefully after you see this, maybe you'll see why I love this uh, publication so much. So I already opened it to the first page, but let me, I'm going to be doing the flip through from the hardback version. And this is actually just an amazingly beautiful book. Um, as you can see featured on the cover there is the Jane Seymour cardigan which is my favorite design from the entire collection and that's saying something because the entire collection is absolutely amazing 
And so here you have the cover. And then as you open the book, you have that information. Then you have um, the table of contents with the list of designers, a comment from the coronation of King Henry VIII's coronation. And I just love those little details of the book. Like even here, they tell what each role of each of the women were. And I love that historical aspect. It gives you um, details about the newer edition because this is a newer edition. Also, look at that, you get the family tree and more information about the tutors. Now let's get into the designs, which are absolutely amazing. I'm not going to, again, again I said it before, but I'm not going to go into detail, so I put post-its just so I can be able to flip more easily to the designs. And again, here we have the Elizabeth of York, which I have created, and it's again one of my favorites. So the book starts off with Elizabeth Woodville, and this is a very simple design, as you can see and it's still quite stunning. Then we go to Margaret Buford, and this is actually modeled by Alice Starmore's daughter, Jade Starmore, who also has designs in this collection. And if I'm not mistaken, she designed this garment here, which is amazing because it's actually reversible, but I'm not gonna uh, get into trying to show every shot. And it's actually probably showing up kind of dark on the camera. Let me see if I can zoom in. Okay, that hasn't really helped with the clarification. But yeah, there you can see how stunning that garment is. Okay. Then we have the Elizabeth of York, another quite striking design, which I think is just lovely. If I could knit all the things, I would love to make another version. We have the Margaret Tudor, which I really want to make one day because it seems like I think it will challenge my skills more. And it's a beautifully cabled design. And I want to say that with every design, they have this narrative as if the historical figure is talking. And I love that. I love reading through those narratives, even though I've read through this, these books quite a bit. Um, but I think that you may find it fun if you're really big into history. Here we have Catherine of Aragon. I'm looking forward to creating this one day. A beautiful fair garment. Then we move into Mary Tudor. Again, I have plans, really I have plans to make um, almost everything in this book um, over the course of my lifetime. <laughs> Sorry about that noise. Okay, I think it's fast. So there's the Mary Tudor, a very beautiful popular design from the book. Here we have the Lady Mary. I think it's absolutely beautiful, but I actually created a cue of how I plan to go about creating each of these garments. And I think that this would be the last garment because I'm not as big into um, shawls and wraps, even though this is quite stunning. I recently ordered a kit to create the Anne Boleyn and I'm hoping to cast on before the end of 2020. Again, such a beautiful, beautifully tailored garment. I've already created the Jane Seymour. It's still a favorite. Then we have the Anne of Cleves. I also have plans to create this hopefully next year in 2021. I really want to create the Catherine Howard. I think that the details of the garments are quite exciting and I think it will challenge me. However, let me see if I can zoom in on that for you. However, I think the most difficult part for me with this garment will be how to style it because I'm really not sure how to style it. I mean, I could wear it with a simple black skirt as pictured, but I would like to have more options. So that is like the difficult part for the Catherine Howard for me. Okay, let's keep going. Here we have the Elizabeth I. I think this is an absolutely beautiful garment and I want to create it um, one day. And um, I'm thinking of a red color for my version. I currently have the Mary Queen of Scots on the needles. Let me zoom in again. And I'm going with the more fall color palette, uh, autumn color palette. This was also one of the first garments. As you can see, I'm typically attracted to the cropped um, garments first, but I'm going to get to the other garments. <laughs> 
This is my favorite part of the book and it's actually about the knitting. I love reading it because it goes into details about the inspiration behind the designs and the construction and the techniques that are involved and I love that aspect of the book and so I love reading that and getting familiar with that especially when I'm taking on a new project from the book. And finally they have an interesting section about the jewelry because you're going to see some really striking pieces in the book um, that accompany each of the garments and I love those attention to details because I often think about the jewelry and the accessories whenever I'm wearing my um, knitted garments or my handmade garments and I like to choose accessories that will highlight them. Well that concludes the flip through of this book. I hope that you found it helpful and I'll see you all later.